To be completely honest with you, learning to code takes a lot longer than most people think. Yes, there are some like three month success stories that make their way to the surface, but it's going to take most of us 10, 11, 12 months or more to learn to code and get an actual job. On the one hand, 12 months to learn a skill that you will use for the next 20 years or more and have a lucrative career out of is not a bad time investment. But on the other hand, 12 months is a long time to stay consistent. Anyone motivated can learn to code, but when your expectations of learning to code in three months run into reality, that can be pretty damning because the only sure way to fail, the only way to guarantee that you won't become a developer is to stop and quit. If you're going to stand this test of time, this 12 months or more to learn to code, you need to have the right expectations and you're also going to need a plan. Even better, you're going to need a system. And that's exactly what you're going to learn in this video. In three chapters, I'm going to explain why goals don't work for code newbies, why you need a plan and how systems are the key to your success as a new developer. Come on a bit of a journey with me because we're going to build up this definition of a system step by step. And I'm pretty convinced by the end that you're going to see how goals just aren't that great for personal development goals like learning to code and why systems make you much more likely to succeed instead. My name is Alex. I'm a self-taught developer and the host of the Scrimber podcast where I speak to developers about their career. Let's get into it. Apparently, the best way to get what we want out of life is to set smart goals. And if we write them down, we'll be more likely to achieve them. Okay, let's say you're new to the world of web development and you set a goal like learn HTML in two weeks. I mean, you read that HTML is a fundamental skill and probably a good place to start. And if you can teach yourself C++ in 21 days, you can teach yourself HTML in about the same time. Except after just a day or two, you learn and you realize that it makes much more sense to learn HTML and CSS together you're now at odds with your goal. You're either going to stick to the original goal in face of this new information, and you'll just slog through doing HTML for two weeks. It's gonna get boring. And by the end of two weeks, you're gonna be so deep into stuff that's not even useful. It's just kind of a waste of time. Or you're gonna go back to the drawing board and set a new goal with this new information only to repeat the same mistake again, because this HTML example is easy to understand because I'm assuming by now you've gone a little bit down this web development journey. But the one universal truth about a big brand new world like web development is that you just don't know what you don't know. How can you predict the perfect study plan and goal? And how can you estimate how long things are going to take to set smart goals if you've never been in this place before, if you've never ventured and learned a skill like this before? And so this is the problem with goals. Goals are inherently inflexible and they lock you into an outcome during a time where you're learning new things every day. Meanwhile, I think you're delaying happiness because whenever you set a goal, you're implicitly saying that when I reach this goal, I will be happy. And that can cause you to endlessly put off happiness until the next milestone. I strongly believe that one way to sustain yourself for the year or more it takes to learn to code is to make it fun and manageable for yourself, not beat yourself up because you kind of didn't meet your goals. So a goal tells you where to go, whereas systems tell you what you need to do every day to move forward in a broad direction you value. I want to explain this carefully with some examples because when I first learned about this idea, it sounded a bit abstract to me, but once I grokked it, it really put me on the trajectory to becoming a hireable junior developer. Let us start with some simple examples from the book, How to Fail at Everything and Still Win Big. The author observes, firstly, that most people who succeed follow systems, not goals. That's encouraging. He goes on to explain that in the world of dieting, losing 20 pounds is a goal, but eating right is a system. In business, making money is a goal, but being a serial entrepreneur is a system. I could add that learning to code websites at a hireable level is a goal, but studying one hour every morning before work and building a portfolio of projects is a system. So I think this really highlights the difference between goals and systems because a goal is a target, something to reach, but a system describes specifically how you're going to do something sustainably. Maybe it's becoming clearer that systems are a bit more flexible, allowing you to adapt based on new information and follow your curiosity and motivation so that you can do this in the long term.
term. And systems describe what you need to do consistently to be successful, not just where you have to go, but, but how to get there as well. In my view, there are four tenants to systems, which are daily routines, rules, habits, and fail safes. Let's break it down. Of these four tenants, the most important thing is gonna be your daily routine because it grounds you and makes sure you're moving in the direction you value every single day, even if it's gradually. Critically, this is a chance to carve out time in your day where you can focus and not be disturbed to make progress towards this very important goal. You can't always control the output and you can't always predict what you're going to learn and what direction things are going to take you in. But the one thing you absolutely can and must control is your input. And that means carving out time every day and making a statement like, you know, I'm going to work on projects from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. after work every day. It also involves creating if then statements, which is like if I'm genuinely exhausted after work or if I have social plans, then I will do my coding early in the morning instead. Or maybe you'll make another if then and say, well, if I'm really struggling, then I'll listen to a podcast and just keep moving forward no matter what. We all have rules that we choose to follow. It was always ingrained in me as a kid not to eat my dessert before dinner, for example. When it comes to learning to code specifically, now is a good time to consider what are some rules you can follow and live by that are going to make you more likely to be successful. If you're looking for a place to start, I really like the two day rule from Matt Diavella, which says that you will never skip the thing you're trying to accomplish more than two days in a row. It works really well for the gym, but coding as well. I also believe in no zero days, which is, you know, when you're really struggling, genuinely struggling to make progress on your goal that day. And it's not because you didn't carve out time and you weren't serious. Maybe you're just exhausted or your head's elsewhere. Just do something, anything, especially something that's kind of easy, but will make you much more likely to succeed tomorrow. So for example, I might do some planning for the next day, or I might fix a tiny bug in my GitHub project. And the really interesting thing is when you lower the barrier and the you know, standard of yourself so low to just do one thing, you might end up doing another thing and 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 another thing. Systems are all about making it easy to succeed and hard to fail. And habits are a very powerful productivity hack. Now, habits could be a video in and of themselves, and I'm no expert, but we all recognize habits as things we do almost without thinking, like brushing your teeth or washing your hands. One example of a habit you can build when it comes to coding is committing to GitHub every day and striving to build a green wall. You might find that once you get in this habit, you start to combine rules. Like now all of a sudden it's hard to have a zero day so you're following the no zero day rule and once you get started on the streak and you make a bit of progress you might find that it's more uncomfortable to let that go than it is to do nothing and that's really powerful because it keeps you on track I'm not sure if this is described by the people who know what they're talking about, like James Clear in Atomic Habits, but when I think about systems like software systems or rocket ships or something, I think there should be some kind of failsafe. In other words, a way of keeping yourself accountable that does not rely on motivation. For example, there's this website where you can pledge an amount of money and nominate someone to hold you accountable. You describe what you're trying to do and accomplish, and if you don't do it, you have to pay the money to the person or the company. Now, now that wouldn't work for me. Me, personally, I wouldn't want to do that. But an example that I think is much more approachable is having something like a study buddy and putting a recurring event in the calendar to synchronize and do a retro at the end of the week or, or some planning and at the beginning of the week. This is something about just how I work. Like if I put something in the calendar and I tell someone I'm going to be there, I can't really explain it. I just always show up. And that's one reason I've managed to do like 80 podcast episodes in a row. It's not that this this may or may not work for you. You know, calendar blocking and study buddies is a great technique for anybody. But there is an element with this where you're hacking your own psychology to, to make it more likely for you to be successful. And I think having some kind of failsafe is important. So what's the verdict? Are all goals bad? I think that if we're honest, goals can be useful for narrow, short-term, predictable type of things. 
But for long-term endeavors, like learning to code or, or getting in crazy shape or something, goals just don't really work compared to systems. This is because change happens so fast. Another type of goal which makes a lot of sense to me is something called a North Star, which think about that as like your big guiding goal that you use as a compass to inform that general direction you're moving towards, but also maybe prioritize and filter opportunities. You know, if you get a lot of opportunities and there are a lot of things calling for your attention, sometimes you have to align by that North Star to make sure that you're going where you need to go. But in general, when it comes to learning to code, I think goals are rigid pursuits that shut you off to other opportunities that might be more conducive for your success. Comparatively, systems allow a bit more room for flexibility and makes you much more likely to be successful in the long term. In this video, we broke it down and I gave you some examples. Let me know, are you going to try out systems? And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment because I monitor the comment section quite closely. If you did get value out of this video, it would be great if you left it a thumbs up, subscribe to the Scrimba YouTube channel. By the way, here are two videos I think you might enjoy next. I've been Alex Booker. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.